What's up, YouTubers? Jose Quiñones de CNC do here. Hey, I'm washing my hands because you never know. Anybody could come out of the woods and I would need to, like, shake their hands or something. Well, howdy there, partner. Oh, hey, man, I'm so sorry. My hands are wet. I guess I'm going to have to wait until they dry up or something. Don't you have a towel? Actually, that one is wet, too. Seems to me what you need is a battery-operated hand dryer. Ooh, that has some odor, doesn't it? <laughs> Okay, so this is my 20 volt battery based hand dryer machine. It uses what is known in the RC industry as a ducted fan, which is a brushless DC motor configured to basically blow air at pretty massive speeds, which is how you have your RC jets uh, capable of flying. But in this case, we're gonna use it to dry our hands. For this project, I am going to use the reference design, which goes by the name of Q Air. It revolves around a PAC5222 device, an extremely affordable solution for driving three-phase BLDC and PMSM motors. The design is single chun and will use six-step trapezoidal commutation in sensorless configuration. The integrated back EMF comparators with internal virtual node will provide sensorless algorithm support. There is one aspect which will be key about our design, and that is that in order to make these hands free, we need a hands-free sensor. The solution comes in the form of an infrared sensor. How does that work? We will excite a photodiode with a specific form of energy and infrared light will be sent into the infinite. Are you look, what was that pulse of light? Okay, not that infinite, but almost. In parallel to our photodiode, we will place a photoreceptor capable of sensing infrared light. Why infrared light, you ask? Well, there are many reasons, but the most important one is that we do not want to confuse our sensor with, say, the light of a flashlight. And look, I tell you, I think I saw a light. When the light from the photodiode goes into the so-called infinite, the photoreceptor sees nothing. But at some point in time, an object, say my hand, will approach this light stream and cause some of the photons to be reflected back into the photoreceptor. The photoreceptor output changes state and the microcontroller realizes it is time to engage the motor, providing a mini tornado worth of air. Now, I did mention a specific form of energy would be used with the photodiode. In order for the photoreceptor to see the infrared light, we must encode the photon stream in a 30 kHz carrier pulse signal. This will make it even harder for other sources of infrared light to confuse the system and start the motor randomly. I will get three birds with one stone and use the PAC5222 timer A for three simultaneous purposes. First, three PWM outputs will be used to power the three-phase inverter which will power the motor. Another PWM will be used as my triggering signal to engage the ADC sequence and extract the motor current so I can close the loop on torque. The last PWM output will be used to drive the photodiode with a 50% duty cycle signal at the required 30 kHz frequency. As you can see, for this to work, the motor PWM switching frequency will also be 30 kHz. But that is a perfectly acceptable switching frequency for an application of this nature. Well, YouTubers, this was this week's brushless DC motor project. I want to close it, but before I want to say a few little, uh, little details, like for example, uh, how I'm using some of the timer features inside of the microcontroller to measure time and run the state machine. For example, something that I do is that I debounce the sensor because I don't want any little pulse to activate the machine. So only a pulse that is 300 milliseconds or longer will activate the motor. That way, if, I don't know, if a mosquito flies through the sensor and there is a little blip, that would not get the motor going. Another fascinating aspect is that I'm using the PAC5222 DC to DC switch mode converter as a SEPIC that allows me to generate my 12 volts out of the 20 volt battery regardless of the input voltage even if the voltage drops down to like 3 volts the 12 volts remain well youtubers this is a good example of how you can put every single aspect of your application inside of the microcontroller the PAC5222 device it will handle the motor, uh, the motor driving, the commutation, sensing, uh, everything. Everything inside of the single device. Which is what allows you to grab a simple motor like this duct fan and transform it into your own 
battery operated hand drying machine, which is perfect for camping trips and picnics. I want to thank you for tuning into my YouTube channel, and we're going to see you on the next one. So can we shake hands now? Man, I'm not that good with the special effects.